was the last time you were on the world team. And what in this match, what would you have displayed that's different about you? Of course, I already defended. Defended first period. That won't be the match. So, just you, you know, you're obviously headed to Serbia, second world team, you know, back to back. Uh, with that, back, back My to back. My fourth world team. What? It's my fourth world team. Well, yeah, with your fourth world team, uh, you know, headed back to Serbia. Uh, how's it feel, man? Uh, I've never been to Serbia. I'm excited to go there. My little coach, Coach, Coach Momir, is Serbian, so it'd be nice to have gone over there with him. But I got some pretty darn good, good coaches in my corner right now. Yeah. Just given what you've been through here in the last several years, how's this feeling right now? Um, it'll feel better once I start feeling better. I've been pretty sick the past two weeks. It's, you can tell I can't really talk, so yeah. just going home and laying down and resting with my wife. Would be nice, my little dog at home. Just you made a point of crediting your wife among the other people who helped you over the last yeah. two years. Yeah. What specifically did she and other people do for you? Motivation. Motivation to grow up, to enlist, uh, to become the man I was always supposed to be. What's that experience been? Becoming a work, um, part of the world class athlete program, becoming a soldier, all those things. Ah. Uh, Basic and uh, our job training was definitely a bit of a culture shock, but man, I was I was made for this. I was made to be a soldier athlete. I was made to be a part of this team. You know, it's uh, it's been it's been wonderful. Different ways I never could have told you, predicted or imagined, but wonderful all the same. Spencer was one of your coaches. Didn't he used to be yeah. one of your competitors? Yeah. Yeah, How was it he was that? actually my idol growing up. He was my favorite Greco wrestler. Started with Dennis Hall and Garrett Lowney when I lived in, in uh, back in Wisconsin. I trained at their club. And then, uh, you know, once I started going to Northern Michigan with Coach Yvonne, and I saw, I saw Coach Mango, uh, that was a wrap. He was my favorite wrestler. <laughs> All he did was reverse, reverse lift people and throw them, and, you know, it was like art watching it. So, uh, yeah, it's just going from that to competing against him to him coaching me now. Life is pretty funny. Did you and Spencer talk about stories about the past since you've done this? Since I mean, you've we've, that? we've just spent so much time together over the years. There's not... Besides him being a little older than me, you know, we've gone through a lot of almost definitely identical things, you know. Mm -hmm. When you were dealing with injuries, was the plan to always get back and make another run at a world Yeah, team? that was the hope. Uh, that was definitely the hope. You know, that was up in the air for a very long time. So without my, without my coaching, without my leadership, my coaches, and the biggest of all, my medical staff, my trainers, and my doctor. Without them, I, I wouldn't be here. Same with my wife supporting so, me at home. So how did hope become reality? <sighs> a lot of rehab. A lot mm. of rehab, a lot of really hard days. Prehab, rehab, um, you know, not being able to do all the same training everyone else is to be able to do to have to kind of to monitor it and adjust. And for me being, you know, I turned 30 in six days. So it's uh, it's very different than you know, in 2013 when I was sitting here in front of everyone, made my first world team very different. What all did you have to deal with? What all did you have to, to come back from, injury-wise? I don't know, I'm talking about that. Okay. How about uh, wrestling him with Bill Farrell? What were, what were takeaways from that? Anything you no applied legal, here? No, don't let him get an illegal front headlock, which he finally got called for today. Can't go two hands to the head. The World Class Athlete Program, there's, I think, five years, something close to that today, and then yeah. some in New York, too. Mm -hmm. um, as a group, what have you guys done kind of come together? And um, a lot of them have been training together for quite a while before I got there, but we had all grown up, you know, through juniors and stuff, wrestling together. I think the biggest thing, I talked about it with Gary before the tournament, is accountability. Those guys go in there, people like Alejandro Sancho, who's competing next week, you know, people like Ellis Coleman, people like uh, Michael Hooker was here with me every step through the way. Like, you know, when I say I want to do stuff, they hold me to it. And that's a top-down. That's a top-down mentality. It starts with our leadership, way at the tippy top, all the way down to our commander, first sergeant, to our coaches, to us. It's, uh, it's something that uh, when I got to basic and, uh, and advanced individual, our job training, um, that was the culture shock. That was the adjustment. And then once I made that, I just, everything has gone beautifully. Couldn't be happier. How has uh, perspective changed, if at all, since? Uh... Very grateful for the opportunity to compete before I expected it. And I, because of different circumstances, injuries and whatnot, that was not uh, expected anymore. None of this is expected. So I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to be here and to compete. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jesse.